What is going on, beautiful people? Today, we're talking about friends with benefits with a narcissist or toxic person. If you're new here, my name is Lee Hammock. I'm a clinically diagnosed narcissist, and welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. So welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, folks. Yes, yes, yes. Friends with benefits with a narcissistic person. What's it like being friends with benefits with a narcissist? Like, so if you're, uh, let me see, how, how do I say this and be nice? <laughs> if you don't know what friends with benefits is, it is when you are clapping cheeks with no strings attached, when you are having, you know, physical intimacy, bedroom, bedroom play without the relationship dynamic, right? You're just friends with the benefit of um, banging, bumping uglies, how, how the folks used to say back in the day. This is, happens all the time, y'all. This is something that, that consistently, continuously happens to a lot of people in this space. Like you become friends with benefits with a toxic narcissistic person. This, this, it just, like so many people do this. So many people fall into this dynamic. Like either you start off in this situationship, either like the relationship starts off this way, where like there's no, there's never ever a label given to the relationship, right? You're, you're doing everything, but actually in a relationship, like you're sleeping together, you're doing everything together, but you're not actually technically in a relationship and a narcissist, toxic person, whoever, never f officially just says, oh, we're together, but they treat you like you're together. You know, friends with benefits, like you don't like, you're not in a, you're not in technically, in a relationship, right? This only, <laughs> this really typically out only benefits the narcissist, right? It really does. Like they get to like, because if you're friends with benefits with a narcissist, like I said, like I said, you could possibly be doing everything. You, you look like you're in a relationship, but you don't actually ever get to officially get that label. You know, you're just, oh, we're just friends. You, you'll ask the question, you'll say something like, hey, what are we? And they'll say, oh, we're friends. You know, we're just friends. We're just, we're just seeing it. We're just having fun. We're just seeing how, we're just seeing how things will go. That typically only benefits them because technically, if they go out here and sleep with somebody else or do something with somebody else, they can just tell you we're just friends. To a narcissist, friends with benefits normally means one-sided, open-ended relationship. You don't get to do what I get to do. I set the standards for this relationship. I set the rules for this relationship. You do not get to do what I get to do. And it's like an unspoken rule. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's spoken. Sometimes it's absolutely spoken. You know, where they will just absolutely tell you, hey, you don't get to do what I get to do. Like, I make the rules here. You know, we tell you, like, if you want to be in a relationship with me, you can't do anything, but I can. You know, and then if you catch them, quote unquote, catch them doing something outside the relationship space. They can always just tell you we're only friends. We're just friends. We're not, it's not technically cheating because we're not together. That's technically what friends with benefits means to a narcissist, y'all. Like it, it just means one-sided, open-ended relationship. Open relationship, not open-ended, open relationship. You know how open relationship is, right? I can go out here, sleep with whoever I want to, do whoever I want to, go on dates with whoever I want to. But if you do it, you if you do it, you're a dirty, nasty whore or slut or pimp, whatever they want to call you. They'll call you names, they'll belittle you, they'll demean you, they'll devalue you. You know, friends with benefits. I yeah, I don't recommend doing this with a narcissist. Typically I don't recommend doing this with anybody because it's very difficult to just keep it on one level. It's very difficult to just be sleeping with somebody for years and just keep it on a friendship level. Hey, we're gonna meet here at eight, clap. We're gonna clap, make the clapping noises, then we're gonna leave by 8.30. Got it, see you there. It's very difficult to do that with no feelings attached. Hope you have a good day, bye, see you later. Next time, same place next time. <laughs> you know, and this is what happens, y'all, because they, if you actually want to be in a relationship with them, right, they'll string you along for a long time, prom maybe promising to be in a, a, a deep relationship with you later on, right? They might promise you, like, later on, hey, like, if you play your role long enough, you'll be the one sooner or later. And then they end up in an actual relationship with somebody else, but don't necessarily cut you off. 
They'll keep you as friends with benefits while they're building something with someone else. They'll be friends with benefits with you while they're married to someone else, while they're marrying or engaged to someone else. They'll still be friends with benefits with you. They'll still keep you in this situation ship and not allow you to move on and still lie to you and just say, hey, look, I get pressured into marrying this person. I was pressured into marrying them. I, just, I don't really want to be married. I really want you, but I don't know how to get out of this. Give me time, please. Let's keep sleeping together. Let's keep doing what we've been doing, but give me time, please. They will waste your whole life doing that. And will some people agree to do that for, the re- for a long ass time? Yeah, some of y'all will. Let's be real. Some of y'all will. This has been a situation shit for 10 years. What? They keep making me promises that they're going to leave their partner and da da but come on, y'all. Come on. We got to, y'all, it's wake up season. It's, it's wake up time right now. It's absolutely wake up season. Y'all have to have some type of discipline. This is speaking directly to the survivor, thriver, whatever role you're playing. You have to have some type of sexual discipline. Well, Lee, it's so good. I just don't want to let that go. You, if you don't have any discipline, you're going to ruin your damn life. I promise you, if you don't have this type of discipline, sexual discipline, bedroom discipline, you're going to ruin your life. I never had it like that before. So what? You got to have some type of discipline or it's pointless listening to any of these videos. Really, realistically, listening to any type of video to help you heal, to help you grow, but not having discipline is going to be a a colossal waste of your time, y'all. You have to put it into work. You have to have the discipline. You have to build it. If you don't have any discipline now, you have to be willing to build that discipline. You have to be willing to set some boundaries. You have to be willing to set, set, have boundaries and discipline for yourself. We got to wake up this year, y'all. This is wake up season. If you don't wake up now, you might not ever wake up. Well, Lee, it's been 10 years and I just, what are you, t- what story are you telling yourself? That t- What story are you telling yourself right now? that makes you think that this person's been telling you this lie for 10 years, the year 11 is going to be different. Year five is going to be different. Year six is going to be different. They will keep you around because it benefits them. What's typically the benefit? When they, when they, when they offer you friends with benefits, typically the benefit is not just sexual for them. They get to have access to you. They get to have access to your time, effort, energy, sometimes your money, your body, everything. Friends with benefits to a narcissist is benefits. Benefits, not just one benefit, it's benefits, plural, plural. They will take advantage of you for a very long time and waste your youth, waste your time, waste your prime of your life, waste your resources and have you like you, you might actually meet a decent person, but this friends with benefits, narcissistic person will just like, oh, if you talk to them, I, I can't talk to you anymore, I guess. And you give up on a good person to have a shot at being with this toxic person and ruin your life, miss out on good people. Friends with benefits with a narcissist is a, is a horrible idea. And sometimes, even if you've been in a relationship with this person, right? Because not everybody starts off this way. Some people are already in a relation, an actual relationship or married to this narcissistic person. Then y'all get separated or divorced or break up. They offer you this now. Let's keep sleeping around together. Let, let's, let's go through the whole divorce process. Let's get completely divorced, but let's keep being friends with benefits for the kids, right? The kids want to see us being able to co-parent, and, you know, the better, you know, the kids want to see us being amicable. And what's more amicable than sleeping together? What? <laughs> what's more amicable than the parents still sleeping together, even though they've been separated or broken up for years? They will offer you this as friends. Like, let's stay friends. Like, can we at least be friends after y'all broken up or divorced or whatever? Can we say friends? That means they want to be more than friends. They still want access to you. You don't want to be friends with somebody who abused you emotionally, physically, or mentally, y'all. Why would you want to be friends with somebody like that who's hurt you repeatedly? If they've hurt you in an intimate relationship, chances are they're going to hurt you in just a friendship. I promise you. You're not going to go from your worst enemy, your, the biggest abusive person in your life, to your best friend. It doesn't work that way. They want some type of benefit. There's benefits for them keeping you as a friend. It allows them to have access to your life, ask you deep, penetrating questions that nobody normally could ask if y'all were just co- co-parenting or whatever. You know, sometimes kids are not even involved. They'll just offer you to, to sleep together or whatever. I've said, I've heard this story before, y'all. I, I still do my one-on-ones over Zoom, my Zoom coaching. I've heard these stories like this before where people will break up, not have any, not y'all break, be married, not break, be married or be in a long-term relationship break up or get divorced there's no kids involved then they offer you friends with benefits y'all still keep sleeping together and guess what happens 
they have you get a baby after the divorce, divorce or after the breakup, and that person has moved on. So now they're going to be tied to you. You, you could have been set free, but now they're going to be tied. You're going to be tied to this person for the rest of your life because you friends want to be friends with benefits or the, the, the sexual discipline was lacking, and now you got a baby after the relationship has ended. The relationship you, you got, you were free, but now you even more stuck and tied to the person now for the rest of your life. You see what I'm saying? Discipline. This I plan. That's what you break it down from discipline is this I planned. This is a plan. This I plan. I plan. I have to plan. Plan not to stay friends with an abusive person. Plan not to let allow this abusive person to remain in your life and to continuously to hurt you and harm you and things like that. Plan it. You have to plan it out. You have to plan to be strong. You have to plan things out, y'all. Do not, and this is my recommendation. I know everybody's not going to listen to me. Some people think they're, you know, y'all know more than I do. Some people are not going to listen to me regardless. You, you, Lee, you're a narcissist. Why would I listen to you? Lee, you still married. Why, why wouldn't I listen to you? Listen to me, y'all. It doesn't affect me what you do. It's your life. You get to live it. But how are you going to live it? You're going to live it to the fullest extent or you're going to live it still attached and bonded to this person being friends with benefit with no plan of action to change that. There's no plan for the future. We're just messing around. Let's just, why do you want to ruin what we have? I think things are going well right now. Why do we want to add things to it? Stop letting people feel, feed you this BS. As long as, if you're eating the BS, they're going to spoon feed it to you. Open up, they'll give you a little, little, little narcissistic airplane, the BS. Like, he, like you do kids, how you feed kids a little airplane spoon. Open up, here comes the BS. Here comes the BS airplane. Brrr, open up, open up, open up. Brrr, it's delicious, isn't it? You're going to keep eating it. Yeah. <laughs> stop, stop eating the BS. Anyways, y'all, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out my courses and support group. Check out my kids' book. Remember, it's not your fault. It's helping a lot of kids in toxic relationship dynamics. Link is in the description of every video and podcast I do. Mental illness is out. Peace. Oh, yeah. My Facebook is still hacked right now. Do not buy anything from anybody that messages you on Facebook, y'all. It's not me. It's still hacked right now. I will let you, I'll post a picture of myself some, saying something when I, if, if and when I get it back. Hopefully, I get it back. So, peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. I am extremely grateful for you have no idea. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It helps reach more people and click on the screen to watch another video or to browse through another playlist. There's also a link on the screen to check out my courses and my support groups to help you heal and understand what you've been through. Thank you so much again. I will see you in the next video. Peace.